Hello, welcome back. My name is John. Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be reacting to some art hack videos that I saw on TikTok. I thought they're really good, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So right now I'm 21 years old. I am an artist and architecture student. I've been doing art since I was like, I think it was like the first thing I do. I swear I came out the womb like this. I have to draw. But yeah, even though I've been doing art for so long and I've done so many mediums, there's still a lot that I have to learn. So I love, love, love watching these art TikTok videos because they're just so addictive. Sometimes they're better than actually doing art. Yeah, I know a lot of people can relate to that. Okay, we shall start. You ever do a sketch and you're like, this looks really good, and then you add line art. Oh my god, me. Today we're talking about line, line art. art. Wait, sketching captures loose movement, and we want that to reflect right. that in our line art. The weight of a line is dictated by how much pressure you're putting on your pen. When you're doing line art, ask yourself these questions. Where is the light and where is your drawing? Exactly, where is the light? What's in the shadow? Light is there. Where do your lines intersect? And where is the gravity? In this example, I'm going to add more weight to the lines that are in the shadow, like underneath mm. the leg here, and I'll add thinner lines to where the light's hitting. In terms of gravity, this cloth is being pulled down, so I'm going to thicken the lines that probably have the most weight. There's also going to be natural shadow where lines intersect, so you can thicken those. I know it sounds lame, but this is not easy, and the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Ooh. Okay, so line weight. A very crucial skill. So now, before you can do any artwork, you have to draw your lines. Now, if you do just line weight art, I think it's very important for you to look into the principle of um, density and variety. So the general rule is, in order to make anything look dynamic, to make it look nice, there's this rule called something big, something medium, something small. It basically tells you that in order for your... Uh, it's just a general rule. In order if you want something to look nice, you should have something big in composition, something medium, and something small. It just helps create depth in your painting. And in the same way, this is this applies to line weight as well. As discussed, um, if you have heavier lines with um, medium weight lines and light lines on top, all in one composition, you create so much more variety and tone in your work. Like for comparison, this would be something with just one line weight versus this with dynamic line weight. Like which one looks more interesting? Obviously this one does look more interesting, so very good hack. Here are three art mistakes you need to stop doing right now in order for you to become a better Ooh. artist. Now let's get three started. Okay, so the first mistake I see a lot of artists do is chicken scratch lining. Basically, chicken scratching is when you make a lot of small for eyebrows. lines in order to create a larger line. Instead, try doing much longer and yes, precise confident lines to lines. give your line art a much more cleaner and refined look. It takes a little bit of practice, but you can do it. The next tip is not using construction lines. A lot of new artists try drawing just the outline of their figure or the, whatever they're creating. It gives the drawing a really wonky look because you're not laying down the foundation first before you go into the line art and it makes your drawing look terrible. So instead of doing that, lay down the foundation first, you know what I'm saying? In the construction lines, use the guidelines first, and then you, must, you get a much better drawing in the end. And yeah, the last and final tip is stop choking your pencil. Right here oh is my a god, people hold it like that? It's like holding it like this. Grip that's like halfway in hold it pencil and you But yeah, that's actually a really good hack. I really like the hack about using construction lines. So um, I've been doing architecture. So ever since I started taking design and art, I've learned the idea of creating. So what creating does is it creates the perimeters of what you're trying to draw. And as you try to make out your shape, you start hacking away at this box to refine. And then you keep going until you've completely refined your shape. This is something a lot of designers do to create uh, complicated shapes like jugs or vases. But you can do the same thing with faces. What this box does is it creates a grid for you to follow. And then you can use your proportions, like your rule of thirds or symmetry to help you sculpt out the face. Very good tip. Art tips with Rosie. Make your canvas gray when doing your colors. Very smart. Having a great canvas makes it easy. It takes away the anxiety of a blank canvas. It's like you filled it up. so cute 
Ooh, okay, so this tip is actually really nice. So usually um, when it comes to painting, like for me especially, I, I, I do paint quite fast. And the reason why I paint fast is because I will fill up my canvas as fast as I can. I rarely ever have my canvases just white and I start painting one small detail. Because if you do stuff like that, you it, there's a tendency for your inner perfectionist to, to, to focus on that small part when in reality, in order to finish something fast, which time is time is precious you you should look at the bigger picture so by filling up your canvas you you help finish more of the work oh and also there's this thing called underpainting so what underpainting does is you um, as you paint you create a color history so when you underpaint if you start with something in red you give your underneath all your colors you paint there will be this um, there'll be this warmth to it, which is really cool. And if you underpaint with blue, there'll be this coolness to your painting, which is something I think you guys can look into. A lot of my favorite artists do this method of underpainting, and it's really nice. So cool. I have to voice over for copyright. Anyway, so here are some colored pencil <gasps> tips. Now, if you ever notice that your colored pencil drawings are starting to dull, it is because of wax buildup. Just wipe it off with a tissue or wipe it off with a big fluffy brush. Next. It's so hard if when you're you left and then you color ever, pencil, because uh, when I was when I was when I used to do color pencil art, it would smudge light to dark, because it's better to layer than to start dark initially, and always make your color pencil sharp. Yes, always sharpen your pencils. This is so, huh, baby. Huh, baby. Make all the girls go crazy. Let's go crazy. Go, go, go stupid. She's smart like an A plus student. Up, down, right, down, looking for your love right now. I'm very patient with yourself. Yes, oh my gosh. You have to walk into your art with a positive mindset. If you walk in with a defeatist attitude, you're you're not gonna get better. And it's also art is a lot of um it's a lot of um it's a lot of um continuous learning. Like you're not gonna be perfect on the first try. Unless you're a prodigy in that specific field, but a lot of times you will start at level one and you just up, keep upgrading. If you stop at one point, you're going to stay at that level. You're never going to get better if you if you stop doing art. So like she said in this video, look at your work, be critical and tell yourself what you need to improve from and you'll get better. I need to tell myself this all the time as well. Like I always get um, frustrated with um, faces and yeah, it, it was hard, but I really tell myself, okay, Dad. it was hard. Dad. Yeah, but yeah, very important. Don't tell yourself to improve. <gasps> Why was your mind blown? Oh, sphere shaving. Oh, she cheated! What the heck? Okay. Now she's not cheating, it's really cool. Like, I do like using Photoshop. So Gaussian Blur, what Gaussian Blur does, it's a filter in the Smart Filter Gallery, and what it does is it will blur the edges. Wow, very smart. Never seen that. So it blurred the edges of the drawing. Hey, hey, here's some weird art tips I learned in school. The first is when you're drawing a person from reference, do the head last. And this is because we naturally want to make the head huge True. compared to the body. The Bobble second head. is that you gotta simplify everything into boxes. The head's face Unless in you one build way, like the that. torso's face in one way, and the nips are like the eyes of the torso. They follow that line too. Simplifying that really helps. Next is that you've got to identify the joints. Because when we're looking at a foreshortened arm, oh, our lizard joint. brains are like, no, it can't possibly be that short. But look at that distance, man. It's shorter than his hand. The next is that when you're drawing hands, make sure they're the size of the face. I know, it's weird. Ooh, and a huge facial tip is to draw the nose first. If you can get the nose, you can get the rest of the face. Because that nose provides a central reference for everything. But don't take my word for it. Try it yourself and check. Such a smart... Girl. Oh my god, I love that tip. Okay, so a little more back. So when it comes to drawing faces, um, first tip, 
uh, if you guys didn't notice, your face is the same size as your hand. Well, roughly. It's about the same um, height and width-wise, it is the same width as your thumb and your pinky outstretch. That is the width of your face. Like, am I look about where my, where my ear ends is where my fingers will, t will start. So if you, if you need proportion rules, that is hand equals face. And then when you start drawing your face, start with drawing your nose because what you do is you're creating a central point and you're drawing outwards. And what it does is it helps you create the most important feature of the face, which is the nose, and then you start working outwards. And then you can judge all your proportion based off your nose. Ah, oh, I love that tip. And then when it comes to joints, yeah, uh, apart from measuring your joints, you can also look at your own body and figure out how how big things should be. So if you want to draw yourself standing up, you just see where your elbow is, like it's mid-torso, then draw a mid-torso when you're drawing. See where your arm, where your wrist ends, it is usually about mid-thigh. Draw your wrist ending at mid-thigh. Use yourself in your art. Check us out on IG at Spurgis.com. Here's what to do if your bristles get frayed like this. First, avoid putting detailed brushes in water for an extended period of time. But if you do, get some really strong gel and rub it into the brush until it regains Take care of your brushes. Shape. And then apply heat like a blow dryer until it gets kind of hard, like this. After you do that, you should be able to wash out the gel and it should regain its natural shape. If it doesn't, repeat the process and lay the brush aside for a couple Ooh. days. Oh, okay. So use gel on your paint tip, paintbrush tips. Wow. I'll start using that. I used to just... Um, well, first off, before you do that, make sure you wash off all of the paint because if your paint keeps, um, if your paint, if you keep leaving paint on your bristle, what happens is, even though you apply paint at the tip, it will slowly over time start dripping down to the base, and what it does is it will accumulate here and cause it to start spreading, and then it's just a continuous cycle until it's just so far spread out. So always try to get off all your paint, run it until the water is clear. And also, don't leave your brushes in the water overnight. I hate when I, when I see people do this because what it does is if you leave your paintbrush in water for a long period of time, this um, these the metal and the glue will start to either rust and the glue will also start to disintegrate. And then you'll start losing, you'll start noticing you lose strands of your paintbrush head, your metal will start rusting and Paint brushes aren't cheap, so I will buy cheap brushes and cheap metal will rust. So take care of your brushes. Don't leave them in water overnight. Take care of your art tools. Quick art tip. Using reference to fill colors faster. Most people either outline or use the lasso tool to fill flat colors, but it's so much easier to just go to the line art layer and select reference. Draw pan swag, swag, swag. Work in layers. People always forget to work. They work on one layer. Oh no! Okay, welcome back to VoiceOver John for copyright reasons. So now, this is a tip for gouache and watercolor sets. Do you ever notice that sometimes if you leave your sets out for a very long time, they can dry so out, pretty. even if they come individually wrapped? So, what I do to combat this is with my individual gouache color sets. I will only half open each individual pod and use a piece of tape to seal it back close every time I'm not using it. And this helps create a double air seal layer. And then I put it back in the container as well, just for extra safety purposes. Take care of your pod. Oh, oh my God, that's actually such a good tip. But yeah, um, so with gouache and watercolor, these two mediums are both um, water-based um, mediums. So what it means is that it requires water to activate the paint. So if you have your gouache set and you add water to it, it will evaporate. However, a lot of times with these gouache and watercolor paints, if you do leave them out for a very, very long time, they will dry out. That's why a lot of times in packaging, it says uh, try not to leave it in direct sunlight. Because nothing is forever. It will eventually dry out. So it's good to... What she basically recommended here was to half open the lid and then every time you use it just open a bit of the lid and then close it back with the tape and then after that put it back in the container and then what you're doing is you're creating two 
air seals and it just it just helps prolong the life of your art art mediums yeah very good save money the best artist advice that i can give is to make ugly art no one is good at anything when they're just starting out there's a huge misconception that art is a natural talent i used to draw stick figures my art sucked when i started painting but i kept practicing i improved my techniques i got a better understanding of color and my art still sucks sometimes because bad art is necessary to grow as an artist it's the only way to learn and to improve your technique Period. is to just make bad art if you go into a painting knowing you're going to make something ugly, you take all the pressure off yourself and allow yourself to experiment and grow as an artist. You can play around with color, try new techniques, and who knows, you might create something that you really like painting and develop a totally unique artistic style. So go out there and make some ugly art like a true artist. And if you do, please do at me because I do want to see it. And we can just be little ugly artists together. Aww. Yeah, I think the important thing with being an artist or like anyone approaching anything, it's always to manage your expectations. Don't walk into it thinking that you'll be the best immediately. Because even child prodigies had to start somewhere and then as they kept pursuing it, they just kept getting better and better. We might all enter art at different levels, but this, this thing will never change. The more time you put into your craft, the better you'll get. So like she said, don't be afraid to make ugly art. A lot of times I've walked into paintings and it's just it just turned out so bad. And I mean, I got disappointed, of course, but at the end of the day, I learned something from that. And then when I do my next painting or I do my next work, I can look back at the painting like, okay, I will avoid doing X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And it just keeps getting better. Better and better, better, better. It's like dance. I'm still crab, but like, I'm still trying. Bum ba dum bum bum art hacks. Do you ever find that your tape border right. rips your paper? Well, I have a solution. You can stick the tape against skin or a piece of fabric. It will pick up oils or fibers, making it less sticky and much easier to peel off. Yeah, or get paper tape. Just so my favorite thing. Okay, so if you guys do, if you guys have ever painted a canvas, you notice that the texture of that just so, uh, the texture of that canvas is really annoying, because a lot of times uh, when you paint, you'll see these little white dots. So what gesso does? Gesso is a white primer. It's usually white. It comes in black and other colors, but it is a priming medium that you use on top of your surface so that it can uh, hold and allows paint to stand out more clearly. However, you can use gesso light paint. Um, a lot of times if I want to make a pastel color, instead of buying the actual pastel color, I'll just take my normal paint and I'll add the gesso. And what, it, and what the gesso does is it, uh, first off, it makes more paint. You create more medium. And also it will, I don't know how, but it just makes it pastel. Like I've put in, uh, I have to add this turquoise paint and then when I add the gesso, just turn into this really nice, pretty, light turquoise color. So good. And gesso's kind of cheap. It's like maybe $12 and there's so much of it. This is the one art tip that has helped me more than anything else. Paint the nose first. Like the central the location first. will help with the remaining proportions. An easy way to give your paintings a professional finish is to paint the edges. You could paint them with one solid color, but I like taking what's on the front and continuing it onto the sides. Oh, oh, I love that tip. Oh my gosh, so imagine you paint something and it's really nice and then you look to the side and it's not done. It's just, come on, the professionalism isn't there. So for an extra touch of professionalism, when you paint on blocked surfaces, um, I finish the edge like you don't even have to do shading just take the color right at the edge of the front and then follow it down and it just looks so much nicer I used to I was very wary of this fact because back when I did my first ever exhibition well, I've only ever done one but um, I was I was I always knew that I had to finish the sides because it at, when you when you approach your artwork in the museum you don't just walk at it side on, you walk it, you will approach it from the side and it's 
it's much nicer if from the side you already see hints of your artwork and as you enter the front you're like oh now you see the full image very nice Procreate tip, how to stop those dang accidental finger smudges. We've all been there, you're zoomed in drawing with the pencil, and then an hour later you realize your palm did this. We must end its tyranny. Go to settings, gesture controls, go to general, and disable touch actions. Now your pencil works, your finger doesn't. Oh, I really should get into digital art. Yeah. Only bad part though about being left-handed is a lot of the times you draw from left to right. So as you draw from left to right as a left-handed, a lot of times your my hand will rest on the surface and a lot of accidents have happened. It's happened a lot especially when it come to when it came to color pencil and graphite art because it just it just kept smudging, it's really annoying. Ugh. So oh one tip for left handers is draw if you can draw from right to paint or draw from right to left instead of left to right because you reduce the chance of you uh, smudging your work. That's also probably why I started doing acrylic painting as my main medium. It's because it dries instantaneously. So even if I rest my hand, it's already dry. But one time when I was doing watercolors, I painted from left to right. And I accidentally like touched the first the surface and just ruined it all. Oh, it was so annoying. Art tip of the day. If you're good at art and you love it and you want to pursue it professionally, don't let someone stop you just because they say it's not a safe career choice. The thing is, we're all going to die within like a hundred years or so, and none of this will really have mattered, so you might as well do what you love in this life and just make it work. True. I think with art, there's a lot of notion of it's not a financially stable course, which it isn't. I mean, it, 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 is, it can be. It's just hard, and the reason why it's hard is because Art is a personal taste thing and a, a crucial skill that I think a lot of artists need to learn is apart from being good at your craft, if you want to make it, you have to learn how to turn your craft into a business. This is where your own entrepreneurship comes into play. It's really nice if you have really good business skills because if you can sell yourself, you can sell art, you can make a living from your art. But if you just make art for fun, nothing wrong with that, you can do that for fun. But if you want to make a living off your art, you have to be able to turn it into a business. You have to know how to promote, you have to know how to manage customer relations, and you have to know how to use the internet, because it's a really good tool now. Maybe take business classes. Here's another art tip for you. This is to help with preliminary sketches. Go to Procreate and sketch right over your reference. Make sure to sketch where there is a transition of values, like in this. After you finish, get rid of the reference altogether. This is way easier to duplicate than using a full reference, and way easier to add the transition of Tracing! Values. Okay, that is really smart. Actually, no, I've been doing this my whole life as well. Like, even with that whole board, um, I think only, like, maybe, like, three of them I actually cite sketched from a reference photo. In order to save time, especially if you're painting, because you're gonna you're not gonna see on the painting, it's really smart to just take tracing paper, or you can charcoal the back of your reference photo, and then just trace over the rough shapes of your figure. And I used to do this as well. I would um, circle areas of dark of, sh of shadow and shed um, circle areas of highlight, so that when I was painting, I would have a it, I would have a physical um, mapping of where everything should be roughly. It's really smart and it saves a lot of time because time is precious. Here are 10 tips for drawing smoother lines in Procreate. Number one, get a drawing glove. It'll help your hand glide and keep your skin from sticking to the glass. Number two, get a matte screen protector. The matte finish won't gather patches of dirt and oil and that will help your pen glide more predictably. Number three, don't draw with your wrist. Instead, draw from your shoulder, moving your whole arm. That's Number a lot four, of effort. <laughs> this way you can make those large gestural arm movements even on smaller details. Number five, don't draw a line using many strokes. Instead, use one continuous stroke. Number six, use brushes from the calligraphy section, like the monoline brush, and set its streamline setting to max. Number seven, draw and hold to activate auto smoothing on basic shapes, like circles, arcs, and straight lines. Number eight, 
Use two finger tap to undo. Keep trying until muscle memory gets that line just right. Number nine, don't draw at an awkward angle. Instead, rotate the canvas so that you're pulling the pen towards you. And finally, number 10, avoid caffeine and remember to breathe and relax. You got this. And if you found these tips helpful, don't forget I to like follow, that like, and share. My, my painting teacher used to tell me that you can move the canvas unless it's unless you're painting um, like a wall, you can't move the wall. But if you're painting something that you can move, move it. Make your life easier. Instead of having to maneuver across, like you can tilt it and then start painting. It's so much easier. And less work. Oh, that was the last tip. Yeah. Okay, that was really nice. We really learned a lot of hacks from this. But yeah, I think my top three hacks that I learned from this is one, start from the nose and work outwards. Number two, it was the hack about, um, actually I kind of knew all these hacks already, so, <laughs> but yeah, that's really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you guys are not part of the Hoi John family, you guys should subscribe down below. Um, I'll put this uh, hack video link this uh, link in my description so you guys can watch it as well. Yeah, it was really nice. And if you guys have uh, other videos you want me to react to, just um, send it in the comment section below. But if not, next week I might do another um, reaction video. Love art hacks. Oh my god, it's better than doing actual art. <laughs> Bye.